Uh, hey guys, it's me, Napoleon Doom. I haven't done one of these for a couple of weeks, and that's because I sort of had to reevaluate uh, my process. You see, according to my YouTube stats, people weren't watching the video all the way through, so I had to try and figure out a way to get people to pay attention. Now, my mom says it's because I wasn't wearing enough makeup, so we're gonna give this a try and see what happens. Now, the reason that I make these videos, the reason that I get in front of the camera like this, is because I want to communicate to you what our guest is about. Now, when you do episode art, you're advertising our guest. So if you don't convey what the guest is about, then the episode art isn't doing its job. And if I'm not conveying what the guest is about to you, then I'm not doing my job. So, so just so you know, Grammarica does retain the rights to veto any artwork that they deem not relevant to the guest. So, it's in your best interest to listen. So our guest is going to be James Ernest Brown. Now the subject matter is a little tricky on this one, so I decided to make a video to show you some key images that you could use. James Ernest Brown is the author of Electric Ancient Egyptians, Penetrating the Atom with Electrified Sperm. Brown was a general contractor for five decades and takes a literal approach to interpreting art and mythology of ancient Egypt. His book is practical, not metaphysical. History has created some romantic notions of the Egyptian, and that's created its own mythology and style. And it's not necessarily reflective of the truth. Case in point. So, James has collected evidence to show that the Egyptians were actually an advanced and sophisticated culture. Brown's reanalysis of the ancient Egypt we thought we knew shows that the Egyptians had a much more profound understanding of naturally available forms of energy than we originally give them credit for. Brown repurposes supposed shrines as Faraday cages, intricately carved vessels as housings for batteries, and the gold adorning royal temples as not a show of wealth but instead an electrical conduit. But the Egyptian understanding of energy conveyance did not end there. Brown interprets stories such as that of the god Atum spilling his seed and creating his children Shu and Tefnut without the need of a womb to be more than mere mythologies. In fact, many Egyptian temple carvings depict ejaculation and the collection of semen. History has tried to pave this over because it's been deemed uncomfortable and vulgar to outside sensibilities that would later try to conquer the area. However, Brown believes that stories and depictions such as these were demonstrating something much more meaningful. Brown believes that the Egyptians understood sperm to be an active, living catalyst. He hypothesized that pharaohs and priests used electrified sperm to effect transmutations in various elements. How did they do that? You're just going to have to wait for the interview to find out. Hey, Mom! It's me! How you doing? Hi. Hi. How are you? Um, I just wanted to let you know that I took your advice and I'm wearing makeup in this video. So, um, you, you should definitely watch it. I think you'll really like it. I think you'll enjoy it. Okay, sweetie, I'll watch. Okay. Make sure you do, alright? I will. Are, are you going to enter the Grammarican Pie Art Competition? I'm not going to do that. Oh, don't say that. So, okay, I'll talk to you later. Alright, bye sweetie, love right, you. Bye. 